Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Hi, David. How are you? Hey, I'm doing well. How's it going today, Mike? Really great. Thank you so much for making the time to come on the podcast. And I love your graphic at the back, which I'm sure we're going to hear about. I think it's colorful. Um, you've even got a matching shirt to go with it. <laughs> and uh, I, I love the symbols on the on the bat. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, great stuff. So, um, David, I, I know you're not in the UK, you're over the pond <laughs> in the United States. So welcome. I always love talking to our American friends and uh, hearing their stories. And they're always really great stories. Um, so I'm going to start with my first question that I ask everybody, which is tell the listeners a little bit about you. Uh, where were you born? Have you moved around? How did education go for you? Uh, what did you decide to do as a first job? Did you have a career or did you just fall into whatever you're doing today? And then we'll get into what you're doing today and certainly want to hear all about that. So I'm going to hand it over to you, David, and I'll listen. All right. Awesome. Uh, you know, it really is like that song from the Grateful Dead. You know, like it's a it's a wild, strange dr uh, drive. Right. Right. And uh, for me, it, it has been my I, I was born. So if you ask me where I was born, I was born in uh, Texas. Because my dad was in the Air Force. He was just getting out of the Air Force. On, right. you know, and uh, I was born in December. He was out in January. He was really, it was really at the very end of his uh, service that he, that he had given. And my parents moved back to Brooklyn. They were both Brooklyn kids. They, you know, they did travel a little bit. But they were sta my dad was stationed at, at one point in Germany. And, you know, so they, they had traveled a little bit. And then they had... Uh, Bouncing David boy, you know, I, I'm their oldest child. Uh, I have a sister and yeah. who, who now ironically has moved back to Texas, uh, wow. not, not near where my, my dad was. Uh, but, you know, so, you know, I was born six weeks later, we're in the car driving back to Brooklyn and I grew up in a blue collar family, uh, mostly fine. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, it was 1970s, 80s, you know, uh, our, our lives are different then than they are today. You know, our, our, our yeah. cultures, uh, but it was good. Uh, you know, the, the challenges that, are, that it had brought me, uh, you, you get through, but, uh, you know, normal elementary school, middle school, high school. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you, you, you start going into life, but that, that's the interesting part about uh, going through all that is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I went to, I originally started going I didn't know what I was going to be when I wanted to grow up. Uh, I still don't in some ways, <laughs> but no. you know, I, I was uh, in, in high school. I, I, I wasn't sure. And then I took some accounting courses and I was like, Oh, I'm going to be an accountant. And mm. I had had a girlfriend and my girlfriend was much smarter than I was. I, I always used to joke with her. The biggest mistake was that she was dating me. She was a genius. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if uh, internationally they have the SATs, but in the U.S., it's one of the college scholarships uh, tests that you take. And she got a 1560 or something like that. Like she spelled her name wrong. I don't know why. Right. You know, missed one question or something. Uh, yeah. I, didn't do, I didn't do that well. I, 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 I got a respectable number, but, uh, I, you know, so I stayed home. And she went away to college. And really, that's, you know, was the difference. And I was going to be an accountant uh, until... Yeah. My second or third year, it had to be towards my second year, I walked into an, a cost accounting class, and this is not a knock on any accountants. The professor told us a joke. I understood the joke, and I was like, this is not what I'm going to do for the next, you know, 40 years of my life. And I walked out. I left my textbooks. I left my books there, and I never looked back. Uh, <laughs> I, bounced, I, I bounced around a little bit. I, I did get my yeah. associate's degree, and then eventually I got my bachelor's degree uh, while I was working. I, I went into right. the workforce. I, I worked in the, the legal field for a while. Yeah. Actually, I'm still working in the legal field, but I also do a lot of coaching and mentoring, uh, as right. well as the podcast that you see the picture in the background for. I have a, yeah. I have a bunch of logos for everything that I do. Uh, it's just, uh, I, I love color. I love to share the color. And, uh, you know, uh, I had got married uh, around my, uh, my 30th birthday. I had uh, two beautiful girls. I still, ha I still have uh, two beautiful girls. Uh, we got divorced, uh, was remarried. And so I had four girls at that point. 
And uh, life just brings you a lot of challenges. And that's what I've learned to do over the years is overcome the challenges. Sometimes mm -hmm. I overcome them well. Sometimes I don't overcome them well. And now I know how to manage my resources and yeah. overcome the challenges in a, in a healthier way. You know, mm. uh, a lot of our, our, our challenges that we've gone through really are because of the, our past. So if you're able to look at your past, and that's why I love the, that you started off, you know, so where, where do you come from? And, you know, I come yeah. from really good, good stock, good family. Uh, for the most part, everything was good. But, you know, life is what life is. And we all have something to overcome. And when yes. we learn to overcome it the right way, um, it sets us off. And that's where I'm at now, where I've done a TEDx speech uh, about mental health wellness. And, I, you know, I don't know when this is going to be released, but, um, you know, May is Mental Health Awareness Month at least here in the United States, I think it's international. So it's something yeah. that I, I'm really passionate about to talk about and to make sure that we all use our own resources, uh, no matter what we're doing. Okay. Thank you for that intro. That's really useful to give everybody a bit of background. When, when you talk about challenges, I mean, inevitably, you know, splitting up with your first wife would have been a challenge. It was for me too. Um, and it, yeah, it was really, really tough. Um, especially when kids are involved as well, um, makes it even tougher on them too. Um, so how, how did you deal with that at the time? Did you, you know, how did it affect you or what are some of the other challenges that you have had to deal with before you started, you know, getting more aware of how you could deal with it better? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, so going through that, especially with young children, my, my girls were three and one at the time. And yeah. uh, under the circumstances, uh, uh, you know, it was a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. And I remember sitting in a conference. It was May 11th, 2006. It was a woman's conference. And as I shared, I have two girls. Yeah. And I'm like, look at all these powerful women that are in here. It's a, it, you know, it was a conference. It was a huge conference when we used to have huge conferences. It was more than uh, a thousand people. And yeah. the speakers were tremendous speakers, you know, leaders in their, in their industry. And here I am, I'm feeling really, it was tough to breathe. It was all those challenges you go through when you're going through a divorce. Yeah. And um, then I'm like, I have two girls. I want my girls to sit in a room like this. And um, the first time, I, it was the first time that I heard the poem by Maya Angelou, uh, Still I Rise. And as you start hearing about that, Still I Rise through different challenges, I thought of the, the, the Phoenix. And I'm not sure if you, you or, or your audience knows the Phoenix. Yes. It's, a myth, it's that mythical figure, uh, creature who rises out, out of its ashes. It doesn't die. Most people think it dies and then it comes back. It doesn't. It's a rebirth process, but you're coming out of your own ashes. Mm. And that day I call May 11th is the, the, the day I call every year. I celebrate as my Phoenix day. Wow. And because we need to rise from our ashes, no matter what we've gone through, nobody's gone through a perfect life without any challenges. So you're, you might not have to go through the ashes of something horrible, like a divorce or being a caregiver or the loss of a person, the loss of a job. You know, yeah. there's so many different things that we go through that we need to rise from. It doesn't feel good about it but we rise from it. We learn how to be reborn and find that resilience, get those resources. And then you start flying again. And that's sort of what I've gone through in a couple of different processes. Yeah. And I've now learned how to do that so often. Yeah. I, I yeah, I, I don't like the word so often or the two words so often. So, <laughs> but, but I think you make a good point because actually we all have to go through these times. That's part of being human, right? <laughs> um, it's unavoidable. There's very, very few people, whether you're rich or poor, it really doesn't matter whether you're Elon Musk or Mahatma Gandhi, or it doesn't matter who you are and what wealth you have, you will have human challenges that you have to overcome in life. You know, so... Um, the difficulty is what I found. I don't know about you. I mean, I think it's amazing that 
you had a you've got a day on the calendar i think that's awesome where that you mark as a celebration or when you you know rose from the ashes <laughs> i think that's really cool but um how apart from that realization that you wanted to you know make sure that your daughters would grow up to be powerful women in the world how when you after that conference what did you have to do in order to develop the muscle in order to repeat you know rising from the ashes or repeat dealing with other challenges that would come your way i'm just curious to know who taught you or did you teach yourself what what was the process well the, the, that's a really great question because uh, that May 11th day in 2006, I just started being more positive. And I thought that that was going to get me where I needed to go to. It, it, it didn't. So though that's my first Phoenix day, and you, you mentioned, you know, most people don't have that day. I just, it was a day that I decided that so much was going to change for me that yeah. I wasn't, you know, I, I was in my thirties and I wasn't going to live the way that I did. I, I saw some things. And even though I felt I wasn't the reason for the divorce. Uh, I still had to take my ownership in, in, in some of the, the pieces of it. So it's yes. not, no, it's easy to point fingers. It's very hard to have that finger pointed back at you. And, you know, so that May 11th, um, I just started changing the way my life was. And I didn't know. So when, when you say you didn't like so often, and, and, I'll, and I'll explain why I say so often. Mm. Is, so the, you know, I, I got the divorce and I, you know, made some changes and, and life was good. I, I thought life was good from my perspective, um, mm. not realizing all the things that I still was carrying, the, the emotional baggage, the, the emotional challenges or the yeah. filters, how I was seeing through life. And once I started doing that, that's where the, the real shift became. And then I came to another point where I had another challenge. And this is where I, I really go, even though I was celebrating my Phoenix day, because I rose from, what I thought needed to be rose from, which it, which it does, and it needs to be celebrated. We should celebrate yes. whatever day you rise. It doesn't have to be, and it could be multiple days during the year. We should yeah. always celebrate that. Then I, so then I got into another challenge, and I was like, all right, I'm going to go put myself into therapy. Uh, like you know, I, I I had some anger issues, and I went into this therapist, and he taught me this technique called the havening technique. Uh, and I know it's it's a little popular in, in the UK more so than in the US, even though it was created here in the United States. Um, yeah, yeah. But what it is, it's a, it's a touch technique how to help you overcome trauma. And I was going through my therapy so quickly where I felt so much better. I wanted to learn how to be uh, a practitioner. And it, right. it's one of those techniques that you didn't have to be a therapist to do, to learn. And you know, we, we should never be afraid of running to a therapist, but if we find other resources that are good for us, we can use those as well. And I became sure. one of the first 80 people in the world certified in this havening technique to overcome trauma. And it's, it works for me, uh, you know, and it works for thousands of others that, you know, I've worked with. And, and uh, really, it, it's an incredible technique to help you overcome. And I, it's a re personal reset button, actually. So you can do it really quickly. And I don't know if your, your podcast is on visual, on audio, audio only or visual. Both. You, is it's on you, both. Okay. If you rub your hands. So if anybody who's able to watch, you're able to see how I rub my hands really slowly. Anytime you do that, it's going to start calming you down. It creates Delta waves in your brain. And mm -hmm. by doing that, it automatically, and the Delta waves are something that we use anyway, when we sleep, that's the brain activity. Yes. When we sleep. So to create that, you automatically calm down. And if you can always have a reset button, you can reset yourself under any circumstance. And it's not about rubbing fast. It's a nice, slow rub. And there's a couple other different techniques that I, I teach people how to do as well. Um, and that's what I learned. So that was about four years after the, the, the first uh, Phoenix Day. And then, yes. to be honest with you, three years ago, life was getting too heavy for me and I wasn't using my resources. That's why when I say, when we find our resources, we got to make sure we use them. I wasn't using my resources and mm -hmm. life was getting too heavy for me. And I tried to hurt myself. And 
it was one of the things why I, when I mentioned earlier about talking about mental uh, wellness, we really mm -hmm. all need to talk about, it. we all go through that. That doesn't mean you all, we all try to hurt ourselves. And we're, I'm glad that, uh, and the, the statistics are amazing. Yes. Only 11% of people who actually try to kill themselves are successful. 89% statistically, you know, it's, it's out there, do not succeed. But then they hide in further shame. Now, I, yes. when I was going through my period, I was told it's not your time and you need to talk about it. So that's why mm -hmm. I love to come on shows like yourself. So that way I could talk about the mental wellness. And what I've done since those, those, that three years is I did a TEDx talk. Most people want to do a TEDx talk. I dreamed of being a te TEDx speaker and I became it. I opened my podcast, Peace, Love and Bring a Bat. And you know that was the thing that you're talking about in the background. And the bat has nothing to do with violence. I just want to make sure everybody understands that. I am not uh, agreeing to violence, but the bat is uh, really knowing your non-negotiables and knowing what you need. When do you need to take a stand for the things that you need to do? And that's what I do with mental wellness, taking care of myself. And uh, I love hitting my sweet spot. If you've never swung a baseball bat, there's that special spot where you hit yes. and it feels great. And that's what I try to get everybody in, into that. Yeah, I mean, the, I mean, everybody obviously just talking about the image and the baseball bat that's in the image and I'll make sure to include the image in the show notes so people can see it. But um, what, what it, the first time that I saw it behind you, because there's a saying in America and it's kind of used in the UK more and more, I think as well. And it's, and, and, and the phrase is knocking it out of the park. Sure. And I think that it, I think it's called an idiom mm -hmm. and, and knocking it out of the park is very much like, well, what it's not the park where there's people walking around, but it's the baseball, you know, ground, the park where, mm -hmm. where the baseball is being played, but it, it kind of says, you know, make it happen or you've made it happen or you've achieved something or you're achieving, you know, whatever it might be. And I think it's a great metaphor for mental health, mental well-being, because if people can really knock it out of the park <laughs> in terms of their mental well-being, you know, they're on top of it and they realize, you know, what it is and how it shows up for them, then, yeah, you'll be knocking it out of the park. So, but I also love the symbols that you've put on there, which is the peace and love. And like, it's like a, like a lightning bolt. Lightning bolt. Yeah. I like that too. So you need the power. That, that's what it yeah. is. That's what it comes down to. And the power is within, within ourselves. And that's mm. where we have to remind ourselves. Again, when I tried to hurt myself three years ago, the first question, the most powerful question, and I'd ask everybody the same question, do you love yourself? And yes. most people can answer right away, exactly like you did. You didn't have to think about it. You're like, boom. I could say that right now. I could say right now that I love myself. I had to think about it when I when I was first asked that question. Yeah. And that tells you a lot uh, of where I was mentally. Also, that I didn't really think about. I, I had never really been questioned that. And that's no, one no. of those pieces of power. Because all the power we have, there is greatness within each one of us. And how do we find that? How do we find that that special spot? When we talk back about the Phoenix, the Phoenix rises because it's a God-given spark that re reignites the uh, ashes. And yes, what, yes. I would, what I would say is, who doesn't have that spark? And if you don't believe in God, that's okay. Do you believe that the universe has a special spark within each one of us? I do, and I enjoy sharing it with everybody. Yeah, great. We're, we're very lucky that you were not successful three years ago for you to be sharing all of this with us. I am blessed. And I, I believe that. Yeah. Thank you so much for being here with us and sharing your story. Okay. So, so the number of things that you mentioned there, um, oh, you've been on a journey clearly, but the last three years have been particularly important. And are you, would you say you're now like an ambassador for kind of mental health or 
what, what do you do now in your day-to-day activities to to bring this message out apart from going on podcasts obviously but what what else is it that you do yeah so i'm, I'm still in corporate america i you know my, my, my day job is, is corporate america but I, I i do mentor people so even when i tried to hurt myself uh yes. three years ago i was i was coaching a mentor i had helped people using among the things with the havening techniques so i yes. knew how to help people i wasn't helping myself so now i make sure that there's a balance in my life, that self-care is just as important as everything else I do. Because if I can't take care of myself, if I don't show myself that I love myself, then it doesn't matter. It's not being selfish. Some people go, oh, if you do too much for yourself, it's selfish. No, it's what you need. Now, if you only Mm -hmm. think about yourself, then that's the problem. Uh, Then that becomes selfish. But I, I, I don't, I'm a servant leader. So what I do is I'm involved in a ton of charities uh, here, and as well as globally, you know, I'm always willing to do something for somebody, uh, between the podcast, uh, you know, which keeps me active, the coaching, I'm a, I'm a professional speaker. So I, I love talking to people about a number of different things, not only, uh, self-improvement mindset and growth, and really just, there's, there's so many different things that you can figure out. Uh, I have fun on the, on the stage. I always ask people for their favorite R's because there's an R in your heart. So when you, you, you see and your people, the audience sees the picture, you'll see green. Uh, yeah, teal is my color. And part of that is because that's a gr- that's an earth color. It's a grounding color. We need to be grounded before we start flying, right? Even if you think about a bird, yeah. they're grounded, they're on a tree branch, but it's their faith in themselves that lets them fly. And that's why I like the, the, the greens and the, the, the earth tone colors to do things like that and just keep figuring it out. And that's what I do is just keep talking to people about uh, all these amazing things and trying to partner with people like yourself who are just, look, we're all in it together. There is no one leader. We're all leaders in, in our own way. Yeah. Brilliant. I love that. So, uh, and the charity work that you speak of, is it in specific fields or specific areas of charity that you work do i i I do uh so i there's a bunch of things that i I do i do a lot so uh and that's where i started another you know i I play a lot of off of my as you could hear i definitely have that new york uh accent so i play a lot off of that i i have a organization that I'm, i'm building up called goons for good hey because everybody knows somebody you know, uh, and that's really what it comes down to. But I do, I help veterans. I, I, I'm very passionate about veteran and, and anybody who's uh, served, given their time, as I always yes. call it, they, they wrote a free, they gave us a, a blank check and because they've come home, they didn't, that blank check didn't get cash, but that doesn't mean they didn't come back with anything that needs more challenges. I help people with cancer. Uh, Pink Cans for Cancer is one of the organizations, a local organization here. I work with homeless people. And in my corporate job, I'm on one of the teams that actually helps give out money to organizations of, in, in, in the United States. It's, a, it's called a 501c3. So it has a yes. government designation uh, for tax purposes. You know, I, I there are so many different things that I'm really passionate about, but there are also things I'm, I'm not. But what I want to use the goons for good for is to connect people. Like I've connected people uh, uh, in the UK with resources that they need because we all know somebody that's that, mm. Hey, I know somebody, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. And when we do that, we connect. And even if I, it's not important to me, the fact that it's important to you, if I can support you another way or connect you with somebody else, that's the lifting that the earth's energy, I'm a big energy guy. Uh, where yeah. If we talk about, if I help you and you help me, even though we got nothing out of it other than the exchange of energy, that's good. It was good energy. And that's what lifts us all up at the end of the day. I love it. Yeah. Fantastic. And David, with your mentoring Mm -hmm. that you do. um, So I know you say you're still in corporate America. So I really appreciate you being on the podcast, (laughs) Uh, but, or, and with your mentoring, how does that work? And, you know, what specifically do you help people with um, 
is it again is there a particular focus that you have for your mentoring well yeah so i have, I have a couple of different programs uh, i have the on the path well the, the name of my mentoring uh, company is called on the path and path standing for personal attitudes towards happiness so right you know again i'm not a therapist i know how to stay in my lane uh, so that way, if you need a therapist, I have connections to therapists, both worldwide, uh, not both, yeah. but you know, worldwide. And what I do is I can help you through some challenges if that's what you want. That's why I have a Phoenix Rise program. And, you know, all of these have been successful. I mean, I've just recently, somebody was like, hey, could you help me start a podcast? So I've started a podcast course where if you want to learn how to do podcasting, Come yes. on, we can talk about it. So there's a lot of different things that I do, but I would say it's about mindset. No matter what you do, if you want to be a leader, you need to have that mindset. And not yeah. that, and I, I talk about servant leadership versus it's all about me. It's not about me. It's about the work that gets done for the greater good. Again, that energy exchange. That's what we, we do. So, you know, I have the On the Path program. I also have this really funny word, that ma many people might not have heard. It's a word I created. It's called cluberty. And it's sort of like puberty, because we all go through a process. It's a process. Um, cluberty is that point in life. And you know, you might have gone through it maybe through your divorce or at, at some point, you're like, how the hell did I get here? And what made me see things the way that I did? And yes. by, by working through things, you then go through that process of, hmm, maybe I could have seen it differently or just go through the pieces that you might've gone through. It's kind of sort of like timeline therapy, um, you know, where you go back in time and you, you healed yourself. It's one of the things I created during these three years. When, when people talk about this, this pandemic, it, it, was, it was not fun for everybody and I'm not gonna ever say that, but I used it for a lot of creative ideas. Uh, I, yes. I used a lot of these things and I used the energy differently. Uh, at the beginning, it was the worst thing possible for me to be stuck with myself. Um, but I learned how to live with myself and be with myself and be happy with myself and love myself most importantly. Yeah. Oh, wow. So cluberty is, I, I, I like it. I mean, I like the names of the other programs too. That one really sticks out um, even more so. Because I love the idea of looking back mm -hmm. um, at your life. I was on a course once in Italy, and it was a very different kind of course. But the instructor got us to do, I mean, let's say there were about, I don't know, about 500 people there. Not that many. It was quite a close group. And it was torrential rain outside, and we were quite close to a forest. And this instructor told us, right, we want, I want you all to go outside. So everybody went, oh, what? It's pouring with rain. <laughs> and, you know, sit on the ground in the forest. There was a little, like a forest nearby. Go and sit on the ground in the forest on the floor what i mean not only is it torrential rain the ground is wet and muddy go and sit on the floor and contemplate your whole life mm -hmm. from your earliest memory and walk through your life at all the major events and things that you can remember and realize that the only person responsible for whatever happened in your life was you. Mm -hmm. So I went, wow, that's, that really, is that true? Anyway, I did go out in the pouring rain, sat under a tree, tried to get a bit of shelter from the rain. And when I did it, I went, oh my God, it's true. Yep. It's true. We can blame all the external forces. We can blame everybody we like. But at the end of the day, we made, we moved forward, took that decision, made that step, you know, turned left instead of right, whatever it might be. So I, I like the fact the kind of timeline therapy type approach where you can heal back in time 
some of the things that you might regret that you've done. <laughs> yeah. And, and some of it is just the filters that we had, you know, the, the things that we were told and what things that just didn't feel right for us. You know, uh, for yeah. me, when I was seven, there was a lot of things that happened to me uh, at that time, being bullied at school and, and a bunch mm. of other things. It all just was like, okay, that's where some of my disconnect was. And just yes. by sitting, I, I never sat, I, you know, I was like, ah, I'm all, it's over it, right? I'm over it. But the things that you carried along, that's what you do is you can clean your filters is, is what I call it is mm. filters that we have in our lives and the ability, it really will change your life when you look at it. But a lot of people don't have that, you know, you're, you're brave because a lot of people don't want to look back at our lives. No. We, don't to, we don't want to look back at the mistakes we might have made or what rules we might have done to get us to where we were. Uh, I always say, and I've said yeah. it often, is the monsters in our head are much worse than the monsters under our beds. Uh, you know, and it really is. It's scary to look at what you could have done differently. And, you know, it, yes, it always could be somebody else, but we get to control the most powerful piece is again, that powerful piece inside of us. We get to control what we want to do. That's how you can yeah. have people who are facing dire life consequences, who could be the happiest people in the world, and it doesn't matter. And then you have some people who have less good things happen to them, and they become the woe is me type of attitude. You know, we get to make those choices. In every instance, you get to control yourself. And if you can learn how to control yourself, that's where the real power comes from. Yeah. What well, what's your take on I, I love everything that you're saying. And I think it's particularly important. I'm glad you mentioned a reference to yourself in connection to your younger self mm -hmm. and how things might have been programmed or conditioned. And a lot of it we do to ourselves, right? As well. We, we condition our brain. So with, with some of the techniques and the training and the mentoring and the education that you do and the speaking, what's your view on our conditioned mind, you know, where we've repeatedly believed something or we've repeatedly done something and so ingrained and it's so difficult then to change? Sure. Uh, doubt your doubts. You know, that, that's the first thing is, you know, if you're doubting a bunch of things, doubt your doubts. That would be the first thing. But it, it, it's to look at the filters, how you see things. So one of the things that I had gone through, um, I had a girlfriend who was killed by a drunk driver while I was in high school, oh, while wow. we were in college. I told her to go to the party. She was walking on the streets. She wasn't the drunk driver. He came on the sidewalk. And, and that was the story. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't realize. That. So, you know, of course you go through that period, very sad and, and everything like that. That was, I was 25, but when I was going through the rewriting and diving into my life, you know, during that three year period, um, all of a sudden I'm reading some things that I wrote about her and I'm crying. I'm burst out crying. And then mm. I start looking at the survivor guilt that I felt, you know, I got over that woman and, you know, that, you know, it, but I needed to get over this being the survivor guilt that I yeah. told her to go to the party. I, again, I had nothing to do with it again. And the reason why I use this extreme case is because there's so many things that people have told us over the years, maybe a parent or somebody we, we looked up to saying, Oh, you can't do that because of X, Y, and Z yes. in a protective way. I'm a protector also, but sometimes those protectors, we, we start hearing it an often enough that we then don't take those chances that we need to take or have those conversations that we need to have. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. I'm really sorry again to hear what happened there. That's really tough. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. And how are you managing with everything that you do to hold a corporate job, as well as doing your charity work, your volunteering, your mentoring, your training, speaking, how do you manage to juggle it all? I make time. I mean, there's time. So like I've been, you know, you, you work a lot of hours, uh, you, you devote a lot of hours because 
my corporate job, I, I enjoy, I love, but it's not my passion. I don't wake up in the morning and going, wow. Um, but the other work, it is my wow. You know, taking care of my children, being part of my children's lives, the coaching and mentoring and the podcast, because I get to share people's stories. Hmm. That's my wows. Though That gives me a lot more energy. And then there's times like this past weekend, I needed to do a lot of stuff because I, you know, on the weekends when you have more free time, you want to try to catch up and do the things you can. But I needed time for myself. I, I needed to not do anything and give myself permission. And that's what we need to do. Everybody is give yourself permission to work on your schedule, not on somebody else's schedule. It doesn't matter what age you are. And there's other people who've been more successful earlier, later, doesn't matter. It matters what your schedule is. We're all on our own path. And by working on our own path, that's, it's our speed. You're exactly where you're supposed to be because you need to learn the lessons you need to learn. <laughs> yeah, that's very profound. <laughs> David, um, is, do you have a plan to eventually stop the corporate job if you make enough money from doing the other things? I do. Uh, it, it, it's definitely the yeah. long-term plan. And, you know, really given my age, probably in the next couple of years, uh, yeah. you know, traditionally in, in corporate America, they don't throw you out, but you know, they, you know, they kind of start edging you out. Uh, I, I'm in my mid fifties and um, you know, the goal is because this is all my passion. If I can prepare myself properly, then this is what I could do the rest of my life. And because yes. it's a passion, it's not something that, uh, I'm not the type of person who's just going to sit and watch TV uh, or just sit home the whole day. I need to keep active and I enjoy keeping active and getting the energy that talking to people like yourself and going out and assisting people, seeing that mm -hmm. spark in people's eyes jump up. That's what makes me get up in the morning. Great. So t tell us a little bit more about your podcast. How long have you been podcasting? You're now teaching people how to podcast. What, what kind of topics do you cover or, you know, what kind of guests do you have on? Where can people find your podcast? Okay, well, the easiest is uh, it's called Peace, Love, and Bring a Bat. Uh, hmm. Again, using my New York accent, uh, but I want to try to shock people uh, in the sense of I want you to think about peace and love. Everybody knows what brings them peace and love, but – what do you have to do to keep that peace and love? Now mm -hmm. I can say, Hey, Michael, I love you. And, and, and this and that. And then you do something that, that maybe upsets me, which I sure you wouldn't do, but no. you know, then I go, Oh, that's it. Now, you know, now I, I, that's it. No love for me is unconditional. Like I mm -hmm. might not like what you do or, or you might not like what I do. That's okay. Let's have that conversation. And it brings you a lot more peace when there's no judgments, that's the peace and love. So that's where I came up with the name. And yes, I've had some yeah. amazing guests. The first, actually, the first eight episodes are just getting to know me, getting to know some of the things I say, how I say it. So, but after that, I've had some amazing guests. I have been blessed. Uh, the podcast is a, a year and a half out. So we've dropped a year and a half of episodes where we're closing in on, on our hundredth episode later this year. And it's been great. I, I've had, uh, a wide range of people. The podcast is, is part spiritual, part motivational, and then part perspirational. And by that, I mean, we could sit on top of a mountain and be a guru. Everybody has that potential to just say, peace and love, peace and love. But you need to do something about it. You need to really be in that mindset of peace and love. Yeah. And hearing the stories of people who have overcome things. I had a Holocaust survivor, her, her family uh, just got out of Belgium right before the Nazis came in. And then mm. they, uh, she lost her voice for a while because she had, she was uh, three years old. She wasn't a, a Holocaust survivor. She, her family escaped prior, but they told her on the boat, be quiet, be quiet, be quiet. Yes. So she learned how to be a quiet until she came through life and needed to find her voice. Uh, there was a gentleman who lost his eyesight at 35 being a copywriter and then through various techniques, he slowly has gotten back his eyesight. But learning how to auto lose your eyesight basically within a week uh, is devastating. Uh, you know, yeah. if we all think about that, uh, 
Uh, I've had a guest on from the whose family, she survived, but not all of her family survived from the Rwanda genocide back oh. in the early 90s. So we've had some really interesting people and we've had a lot of coaches who then talk about peace and love and ways to come to a different way to start thinking how to relax differently because not everybody knows just the one way. Uh, that's why when people say that they can't meditate, I go sit with me for a little while and let's figure it out because it doesn't have to be closing your eyes and saying, Om. it really is. There's so many different ways. I mean, if you like driving, if you've ever thought about driving and you might go two or three exits and you're like, Oh, I passed the exit, not realizing it. You were sort of in a hypnotic trance. Yes, uh, that yes. doesn't mean you were, you, were, you were meditating. You can meditate anywhere. That's why with the havening technique, that rubbing hands, it gets a lot deeper, but you could do it anywhere. I've done it during traffic and people are all angry around me. And I'm just like, okay, I'm exactly where I needed to be. And that's yes. really what the podcast is about, is finding our own tribe, the people who want to hear these type of stories and the type of people that we, we talk about. There's a there's a lesson that we all can give. I, I call it the, the magic seeds in our magic garden is you never know what seeds are going to plant and what seeds are going to ferment into growth. And even though mm. you might have heard some of the things that I said previously, it might not resonate with you, but it might resonate when Michael says it. And th that's why it, it, it's not only so enjoyable to hear everybody's story because we all have a story. And that's one of the things that brings out our power. Fantastic. I love the sound of your podcast. It's what I love about it is that it's a real eclectic mix of different views and, you know, things that people can tap into to help themselves learn from others, a bit of education, a bit of storytelling, a bit of well-being, mental health. Um, yeah, sounds amazing. And I mean, if you're going to reach 100 soon, you, you're releasing a lot of episodes each week, are you? Uh, just one just one a week. Uh, there's one been, a week, okay. Yeah, yeah. so there's been a couple of episodes where I, I like the first few episodes, I, I dropped uh, four or five just to get, because everybody wanted to get yes. to know, like I wanted to, everybody to get to know me. Uh, yes. And those were just, uh, just me. And, and mm. you know, I, I did that because, I wanted people to get to know me. You know, I, I speak differently. I might come out with a word like cluberty and you might not understand it. Like, what? <laughs> um, and and it's, it's, it's all these little things. It's, it's, I'm a quirky person, you know, and if you get to know some of the quirks that way, when it's mentioned there, it's not like, Oh, what did he say? Um, yes. And I, I, I felt it important because mental health is one of those things that are important. I want to let everybody know that I'm not coming out here preaching this is the way you do it. I know how to do it. I do know how to do it, but it's because I've been there. Um, I, I, I tell a story, uh, you know, with, with somebody who's going through a challenge and they're looking for all the different guides. You want a guide or a mentor that knew because they've been there. That doesn't mean you've yes. experienced everything exactly the way you, you did. But if you know the path out and you know that mentor, right? When we climb up a mountain, you might take a Sherpa and you find those people and that's what the, that's where the power becomes. Well, I'm, I mean, I'm delighted to say that we're in May recording this podcast and that's very fortuitous that, you know, it's mental health awareness month and that we're speaking to you and the episode is going to be released this month. So people can tap into it. I, I, I love the fact that the havening technique Believe it or not, I have never heard of it. Although I'm in the UK, you said there's some connection. I'm definitely going to research it. But can you do this remotely? So can people connect with you and do this remotely with you? I, I, I do. I, I uh, when you if you just Google the, the havening technique, there's a bunch of YouTube and and there's uh, they they teach you how to do it in person. Uh, mm. But it also works remotely. And right. you know, especially during the pandemic, we we've done that. It really, because it really doesn't matter who's doing the touching, um, as it turns out. And that's why I've always taught the self-havening, uh, because if you could do it yourself, you can reset yes. yourself that much better. And that becomes more powerful. Again, I, I, I care about personal, powerful, you know, development. And yes, because if you're in the middle, so when I was going through my challenges, 
it wouldn't have helped like, hey, I got to call my therapist at two o'clock in the morning. He's not answering no. the phone. No. If I could reset myself and when I reset myself, I could do it anytime. That yeah. becomes powerful. And so you can do it. And I have had clients worldwide. Uh, you know, there's a huge, uh, as I said, there's a huge community in the UK that does it and it's worldwide now. So it's not just the UK, no. but you can do it. It doesn't, you don't have to because I teach it and many people now teach it self havening where you could do it yourself. You and I could have a session and it works. Yeah. The, you know, and, and again, it depends on what you're going through and some things are more powerful when there yeah. is somebody in the room with you because of uh, safety, you know, depending on what you're, you're working through, what challenges you're working through. Sure. But it works just as well. Okay, great. Great. And um, just, just uh, jumping out around a little bit, but just going back to the podcast, um, are you on all the different channels with your podcasts? Where can people I find am. that I, one? Any, anywhere you can find me. Um, I'm on the app. I'm on Apple, Google, Amazon, uh, Good Pods. Good Pods uh, is an app that I, and I don't know that everybody knows, but I'm like in, I'm ranked in the top five worldwide or, or top three percent or something Great. like that. I mean, what, what's been really crazy um, in Uganda? I so I, I I interviewed somebody from Uganda, so I'm in the top five in, in Uganda. I, I I'm cracking the. You know, I, I'm in a bunch of countries. I, I'm in about. 25 to 30 com com countries worldwide, which has always been amazing because, you know, some, some places I can say, Oh, I know somebody in that country. So of course I have, you know, some guests and, and people like that, but um, the random countries and you're like, huh, I don't know anybody there, but you know, like Sri Lanka, I, at one point <laughs> I was like, all right, that's pretty cool. Um, I could say I've been on six of the seven continents. Uh, I'm working on, <laughs> I'm working on, uh, you know, Antarctica, but um, we'll see, <laughs> you know, get the penguins to listen to us a little bit. Well, I've been, I've been to both countries you mentioned there. So I've been to Uganda for charity work. Um, and I've been to Sri Lanka in the days when I was still in corporate UK <laughs> for on business. And both countries are lovely and the people are amazing in both countries too. So I'm not surprised they're interested in that content. Not surprised at all. Yeah, I, I love it. And the great feedback that I've gotten is once people hear about it, they're like, wow, this is pretty cool. And I, the, the audience is growing and I, I think it's good. I, you know, if you like it, some content you might not like, but I think if you listen to it every week or almost every week, you'd find value yeah. in every episode and the great thing yeah, about yeah. podcasts is you know it, it, it's evergreen so it's not like oh i missed that tv show forgot to record it it's out there once it's out there it's out there and that's the, the the beauty of something like this you can binge watch and listen most episodes are about a half hour the ones where i are just me on usually about 10 or 15 minutes nobody needs to hear me more than that <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, what about the podcast training then what are you doing there it was that just a one-off or are you seriously offering that I, I am starting to offer that now so I, I took a course and I was like okay now doing it I I know what the experiences are and mm. also what you could do what you cannot do there's different levels you know do you want to be professional you want to have you know I mean I have a professional setup here I and mean, I can't see it but I have a professional setup here with the lighting and everything like that, but you don't need all that. It depends no. on what you want to do and what is your goals. Now, the reason why I say I'm successful, statistically speaking, podcasts live for about 180 days. If you do, again, statistics say that people give up because my audience isn't live enough. It takes too much effort. It does. So there's work that you need to do. And I love doing it. And I love because one of the things I like to do is to make sure that people have their voice. So yes. if your voice is only for a little while, that's okay. Also it's out there and you know, you never know who's going to hear it, but that's one of the things I've learned about podcasting and, and speaking by putting out your message. You never know who's going to hear it and how they're going to need to hear that message for that day. Yeah. Very good point. Actually. Very, very good point. Yeah. And it, it, as you say, you, you just don't know. I mean, podcasting is becoming so big now yep. and it's becoming really for me, the way that I see it is that every business 
you know, every small business, every large business needs to have a podcast because people almost, it's getting to the stage where they're going, oh, can I listen to your podcast? Do you have a podcast? You know, uh, it's, it is becoming more and more important. So it's be, you know, any, any listeners who are interested in learning more, get in touch with David. He can teach you how to yeah, get Yeah, I think everybody needs to have their voice. So whatever you want to do, uh, you know, think about it. Even if you created a podcast, just, you know, your family. So maybe you want to tell stories because then yeah. it lives out there that it, you, your legacy, right? It, it, it yes. Legacy wise. You know, everybody talks about legacy. Legacy isn't only the mansions and, and the yachts. It's about the stories. I know hmm. for me, hearing my family's stories were much more important than, you know, some of the, the physical items. And really it, it comes down to, if you think you have a message, there's somebody out there who wants to hear that message. And yeah, it, 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 have fun with it. You know, that's one of the things that I do is I use the, the energy of the podcast. Yeah. And it, it fills me up for the day. Like th this type of interview is going to fill me up for a while because it, it, it just is nice. It's, it's good, you know, safe energy. And, and, I, and I really enjoy it. Brilliant. Have you explored the, the latest trend out there in terms of social audio yet? Um, yeah, a little bit. Uh, so, you know, I, I do lives, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm always pushing where I can the, yeah. the videos, the, the, the opportunities, because again, it, it's creating that bigger, bigger market. And also it's really putting out the messages. I, I really like talking mm. about the messages because you never know who's going to hear it. And if it's out there, go for it. And, and you know, I, I've been using TikTok a little bit, um, where I put out these videos that I cartoonize. Uh, so I, 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 instead of having the regular video, I make it as a cartoon and. Oh, I think I've seen yours. I'm pretty sure I have seen it and you, I've seen, have you done them on Facebook? Yeah, yeah. So what I do is I, I put it on TikTok, then I'll put it on Facebook. Yeah, and, 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 and you're please. like a cartoon talk, you're, you're, yeah. you're talking and, and you, I know. Yeah, I have yeah, seen exactly. it. Because it's one of those bring a bat moments. And when I, and I, it's bringing in awesome thought. It's bringing yes. in thought. And that's what, <laughs> that's what I like to do is bringing a thought. It's what's going through my head. You know, it's yeah. not telling you how to live your life. It's trying to say, Hey, this is what you could do. You know, some people say, Oh, you know, you're pushing your, 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 your message on people. I'm not telling you to do anything, do what you no. want. It's your life. But I'm yes. telling you, this is a thought that I'm I'm willing to share. It's my thought. Doesn't make it any. It's awesome to me. If you don't like it, okay. No, That's it's right. okay. Yeah, absolutely. not my problem. And no, okay. So you were talking about a video. What I'm talking about is the the clubhouse, the Twitter oh, spaces. Sure, yeah, yeah. So I, I've um, been on Clubhouse. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I yeah. I, I I was going to uh, do a lot more like solo. Uh, clubhouse i do go on clubhouse often and yeah. i i enjoy it but the the challenge that i found is uh not a lot of people will always come you know yeah even you have a big following no. but also everybody says they're an expert and they're they're kind of not and maybe i'm not either so I, you know I, I believe i am i i i know the value i've added people but not yes, everybody, yes. everybody talks about it, right? Everybody talks about I'm a millionaire and this and that. Look, that's right. I, I went into this one uh, room in clubhouse and they're like, so when did you make your first million? I go, I still have not. Uh, no. So you know, and they're like, what do you mean? Everybody's a, cl <laughs> a, millionaire, a clubhouse. I'm like, no, I'm going to be authentic. That's one of the things that I, I, I also teach about is don't be a counterfeit. One of the jobs I had was, you know, not to teach about how to not buy counterfeit goods and things like that. But I use yes, that yeah. in, in the personal development space is we have to be authentic and mm. I'm going to be who I'm going to be. Believe me, when I make, when I make my million dollars, I'll tell you what I, you know, I won't tell anybody. It's none of anybody's business. No. I'll be more than happy that I made that, that goal, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to be who I'm going to be. Uh, like me, don't like me. It's okay. Yeah. I, you know, there was this, uh, I think it was the beginning of 2021 when Clubhouse really took off. And I was, you know, there was like this, like, 
night little shiny thing over there and everyone was going oh you can only get on there if you get invited and then all of a sudden somebody invited me and I went oh my god you know this is special and then when I started listening to some of the rooms on there and some of the bios I thought were really interesting very telling and this, people seem to do this like oh you've got to have emojis in all your bios and and I went okay, this is, I, I, because I do podcasting too, just like you, we're on a podcast together. I think audio is really important. It has a place, you know, it's all been about video, video, video. But I heard the other day, somebody said, you can just show up anytime on audio. You know, you don't need to dress up. You don't, right. you can be sitting there in your bathrobe. You can be sitting in the bath. You can be going for a walk. It doesn't matter, you know, if you can be on audio and just have a chat type of thing. And I, I, I felt, I still feel it's going to continue to grow. Just like podcasts originally started small and they're now getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I think social audio will grow. And although Clubhouse were like the first people to do it and they do a really amazing job, I have to say. Yes. The second company in the running who I believe might potentially overtake them is Twitter Spaces. And I've been watching that side of it for the last few weeks. And I haven't done anything on it personally. I'm listening to lots. I'm kind of assessing. And then and there's LinkedIn audio that will come. Uh, only a few people have got it, but it will come, which could potentially be big too. But Twitter for me, is the potentially the dark horse who was late in the game, but is potentially going to be the biggest one. Yeah, I, th I, I you know, when you're talking about the, the social audio in that way, uh, yeah, it, what we were all looking for, especially in, in the 2020, 2021 space was we wanted connections. We always want connections. Yes. You know, the great thing about most of those uh, sites and it's worldwide is, at any time you need to hear somebody, you can talk to somebody. You mm. can get up on a stage. You can talk to somebody if you want to. And yes. there's advantages to that. Um, and, and that's where people I know, and, and you know, I've been on you know, clubhouse stages where people are like, oh yeah, I'm still in my bathrobe. And that's okay. I, I still, you know, uh, it, it's fine. I, nobody got to see anybody. <laughs> yes. But it's also, I, you know, if I'm going to be on there, I want to give you the energy I want. I don't, it doesn't matter what I'm wearing. It, it, it no. matters what I'm saying. So, yes. you know, I'm like, I don't care what you're wearing. Uh, it, it, it doesn't matter. I mean, if we're in a video situation, obviously I care about what you're wearing. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but it, it is about the connection. And I think that's the really important part about all this is that find the ways that connect with you. Like I have friends who don't listen to podcasts at all. And I've twisted their arms to, to listen to my podcast and, and things like that. They're like, oh, that was really good. I was like, you're surprised. But, um, <laughs> you know, it's hard. If you're not normally doing podcasts, like, you know, active listening to podcasts, it's hard to change your behavior. And yes. you asked me that question before. Is it possible? Yeah, it's possible. It's it's called one of the things I say. I used to say we rewire your brain. And, and then somebody was like, oh, that's scary. I'm like, how about if I say <laughs> optimize your brain? Because it really is. If you think about when you do changes, if you're looking to change a behavior, weight loss, or, or, or things like that, it really is changing behaviors. So you're optimizing your brain, you're rewiring your brain, thinking of different pathways to get you where you need to go to. And that's really what it is. We all could do it. And by those connections, that's what we missed most of 2020, those physical connections. And mm. that's where Clubhouse really exploded because of the fact that we were able to still to connect people if you were living by yourself, you still had people to talk to. And that really helped. Yeah. Yeah. Very good point, David. Very good point. Okay. So is there something that I haven't asked that you wanted to share or do you think we've covered it? We've covered a lot. I, I mean, I, you know, I, I you know, I, I could talk all day long, but <laughs> I, we, we, we've talked about it all. I, I really would want to make sure everybody knows that, Everything that you're going through, even if you just say, I don't have any mental health issues. If you get upset, anxious, if the kids bother you, your partner bothers you, it is considered a mental health 
episode. It just, it's not as severe as some of the other episodes. So wouldn't it be greater to find the ways to just let it roll off, man? That's what I talk about. I'm the roll it off speaker. Uh, I'll teach you how to roll it off. And, you know, is it going to... Are you going to let it go? I let it go a lot easier now than I ever yeah. did in my life. Um, and in my in my life right now, I've gone through a bunch of things in the past even couple of weeks. And I'm like, wow, this is a lot. And when it, like I said, this weekend, I just took time for myself. So I know self-care is one of those things that make sure you make time for yourself. Even if it's just five minutes in the car before you come into the house, reset yourself do whatever you need to do that. And that's really the, the biggest message that people could take away. Fabulous. How can people get hold of you, David? Could you share a few sites? Yeah, sure. I have a website. So it's, uh, it's under my name, but you also can look for my website as otpny.com. And that it's on the path, uh, ny.com, but it, it, it's just the, the letters. David Shemetsky will get you me at all sites, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter is a goofy jam, but there's also one that if you reach, reach wrote, I guess, reached out to me, uh, <laughs> and you can uh, find me. I have two different accounts on, on, on Twitter. Uh, I'm on Clubhouse. I'm on Dive, which is another one of the social audio sites. Um, you know, TikTok. So uh, TikTok, yep, yeah, TikTok. <laughs> yeah, um, TikTok, and of course, check out the podcast. I'd love to hear from people who yes, either want to yeah. be a guest. If you want your story, if you're doing charity work, I'd love to hear about it because I'd love to promote it. So I really mm. am, am, am as open, and I love to hear and meet people. And uh, so that's peace, love, and bring a bat. And come on and check me out. Peace, love, and bring a bat. I love it. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. <laughs> David, thank you so much for your time. It's been a really fabulous discussion. I loved hearing your story and all the amazing things that you're doing. I wish you continued success and happiness with everything. And um, yeah, I, I hopefully see you in Clubhouse or Twitter Spaces or some other platform. And I'll definitely be listening to your podcast too. So really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. And we'll definitely connect again. Take care. Bye for now. Bye. If you've enjoyed this podcast, please rate, subscribe and share at will. I'm always looking for more listeners and guests. So do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.